If say I had six fish tanks, would I need a separate water pump for them or should I get a non-submersible water pump large enough to do the job? To the grow beds, I feel one of the grow beds sends filtered water to the NFT and that water reconnects on its way back to the fish tank. Make sense? The school of aquaponics. So we have the infamous diagram from Mukhtar. I hope I'm saying your name right. If I'm not, please forgive me, please forgive me. But we do have the diagram here and we're gonna go ahead and break this thing down and find out what we can work on and what, you know, what things are good on here and things that need to be fixed. So let me give a brief overview to everyone out there so they can see what they're, understand what they're looking at um, and can get the gist of what we got going on. So basically we have six fish tanks here on the, on the left. Um, and in each one of these fish tanks, there's a pump. There's a pump placed in each one of the fish tanks and they, um, they're hooked up together. And these are going to um, the media beds over here. They're going to these media beds. Um, they're separated here. And then on the last media bed, media bed number two, there's a drain system here, which is connecting to NFT systems, some NFT systems. And then from there, from the end, um, it's pretty much exiting out and then they're hooked together on a pipe and then it's going back into the fish tank. So this is pretty much what we have. We're dealing with uh, one or a linear um, a system design. Um, again, like pretty much like the last, um, like the last design blueprint review that we did. Um, so if you're wanting to know if this blueprint here would work or it could work, then the answer is yes, it absolutely would work. Now, is it at the highest level? Is it at the aquaponic God level? Not really, but you definitely have a um, the gist of pretty much how to put together a system. You pretty much have that ha have the you're pretty much on the right path, I should say, on 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 uh, putting the system together and designing it. You just have to tweak a few things, um, and then you'll be successful, no doubt about it. So what we'll do is we'll start off um, with the media bed and the drain outlet coming from the media bed. This is always a red flag here when you're uh, when you're trying to uh, gravity feed. Um, from one bed to another, not at the highest level. We're not going to do this would work, but it, we're not going to do it that way. So, um, I'm not sure if this is a flood and drain system, but most people do have flood and drain systems. But if this is a media bed, just a continuous flow media bed, you would be able to get away with this because I see you tried to throw me off right here with this, um, this drain outlet coming from the back. This is a little slick move right here that you pulled. This is a, a slick move, man. And I like it. I like this move that you, that you pulled. So if this is a continuous um, uh, continuous media bed where meaning that there's, there's the, um, the outlet is all set at one level inside of this media bed that it doesn't flood and drain. It just has an outlet and it just comes out as soon as the water comes in. Then this, this little system here, this little thing would, um, would work. It, I mean, it's still going to give you some issues, but it would work. So, but I would get rid of this, um, whole concept here because it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. I like the idea but it's unnecessary problems that we're introducing into the system. For one, the media bed here, um, these media beds are, um, they act as mechanical filters, but these things are not the best type of mechanical filters um, to have in a system. They do the job, but it's not really efficient at doing the job. Um, so what's gonna happen is this media bed that you have here, you're gonna have these solids that are gonna be passing through, it's gonna happen, guaranteed, and they're gonna clog up this NFT system here. That's guaranteed. I can guarantee that that's gonna happen. So we can get rid of this all together right here. Even though you added a little slick move in there and added a little drain at the end, that was slick because I, I know why you did that because that makes up for the flow that these NFT systems uh, can't receive because they can only receive a small amount of flow. So you put that little extra outlet on this grow bed to make up for it. Slick move. I got you. I got my eye on you. So from there, all of the, um, the, the outlets from the grow systems, they pretty much connect together on a, on one single pipe, which is fine. That is totally fine. Um, and, but you have them going to the fish tank. So this is the part why uh, that I would take issue with as a red flag. Um, I don't want anything, I don't want the fish tanks to be relying on anything gravity fed and you know, in these type of systems. Now, if it's a small system, small hobby system, beginner system, uh, that is totally fine. If you have just a one system, uh, uh kind of setup, then that totally works and it's totally fine. But when you start getting more complicated, like how you have these designs here, this design, then, um, we want a constant flow going to the fish tank. So we're going to need those fish tank lines under pressure. So, 
we'll rearrange that and I'll show you exactly um, how we'll do it. So moving on to the, the, the fish tanks themselves, you have pumps in each one of them. Pumps in each one of them. I know that was one of your questions to find out if this is necessary. And this is, will this work? It, it probably will. It probably will work. But is it necessary? That the, the, the big question for all of this stuff is not if it, it will work. The point is we're trying to save time on efficient, or we're trying to save money with being efficient. And we're trying to save time without doing things that we don't have to do. That's the, that's the, when you start getting into the higher levels, that's pretty much where you want to be at. Like you, unnecessary things, we kind of want to just X those out. So these six pumps here that you have in here, we can easily get rid of those as you had suggested. So you were in the right mind frame of having that as an option. I like that. So that, that's why we add some tanks. Another reason why we don't want to want to put the um, pump inside of the, um, the fish tank is because the pumps, when they suck the water up, the water level inside of the fish tanks begin to drop. And when you look at fish, when the fish, when the water begins to drop, you'll see that they are, they, they start getting anxiety. You can definitely see it in their eyes. I see it every time if I'm lowering the level or if I'm maybe um, taking out some water or taking fish out. You can see when the water level begins to drop, like you can see that there's a sense of urgency with the fish. So we don't want the fish to be constantly going through that, that, that type of stress. So we don't put the, um, the fish, the, the, the um, water pumps inside of the fish tank. That's why we use the sump tank, something totally separate where we can keep the water level in the fish tank at a constant height. So, and, and also it get rid of all of these pumps. We don't need all these pumps. We can have one pump here inside of our sump tank. So we can have our pump inside of the sump tank and it's going to come up. And it's going to come into the legendary split flow. This is where many beginner aquaponists begin having nightmares at nighttime, just dreaming about this split flow, just terrified of it. It's like Freddy Krueger or something coming in your nightmares. Like people get out of body experiences when it's time to do a split flow. This simple little T that you just put on there and just split the flow. You know, a lot of people are terrified of it, but we're not going to be terrified and we're going to take it head on. Um, and then from there, we're going to do our vegetable area. Like you had the right, and I could tell you had a nightmare too. Look, look the, when we went to the media bed, you had the right idea. Like you split everything. You had the media bed. Number one split media bled Number two split, but this is where you had your nightmare at. You went to sleep and like your, your mind told you that you were supposed to just continue doing it like that, but your body and your pen wouldn't allow you to do it. So you went all the way across that. You could have just kept going. You had the right concept. All you have to do is just keep going and running the pressure all the way to the NFT. And then that would have been that gets rid of any issues of the media bed draining and still having solids and then connecting to the NFT and then clogging those NFT pipes right there. This gets rid of that issue right there. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, so from there, we can come uh, to the outlet and the outlet. I would keep it the same. The outlets connecting all the growth systems. You have the right idea. As long as that pipe is large enough to accommodate all the um, gravity uh, fed water coming into it long and it needs to be large enough. So that's fine. So then from there we would connect um, this outlet and these outlets would go back to our sump tank. We wouldn't connect them to the, uh, to the, to the fish tank. We connect them right back to the sump tank and that will be the end of that portion. And then we'll come up on our split flow. Now we can focus on the, um, the fish tank and we'll leave all the plumbing pretty much um, intact. Like, like you have it on here. We can use this model. We can do it like this. As long as we have ball valves on each one of these um, fish tank inlets, then we can control how much uh, pressure or how much water is coming in. And we have to have make sure our pipes are large enough too to accommodate um, all of the flow coming into there. So this would work. We just come up um, under pressure going in and then we'll have um, an outlet coming out. And this outlet from these fish tanks will connect to some type of um, mechanical filter we need to filter out these solids. We don't want these solids returning back to our sump tank. So we can connect it under some type of mechanical filter. Um, you can even try some type of media bed coming back to it. But, you know, those are not the most efficient. Like I said, you're going to still have solids that are going to be floating around even when you use these media beds. They're not the best type of mechanical filters. But not, they're just not. So we have our, um, we can connect our, 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 um, our fish tanks to come back to the, uh, the sump tank. And then boom, we're done. We got one pump instead of six. We have pressure and flow to all the tanks, um, pressure and flow to all the uh, grow systems. 
and everything is pretty much in, um, in working efficiently. So this is pretty much how I would put it together, though. I like the idea, and um, you did a really good job on um, just, you know, putting a blueprint together. But I just really want to save you some time and money by doing it. I want people to get in the right mindset, even if you're, even if you're starting out, of doing it efficiently because just in case you want to, you know, transfer into maybe you want to start doing an aquaponic business. I want you need to be in the right mindset. You can't be go into an aquaponic business with a hobbyist mindset. So if we can just start out doing it at, a, at an efficiency level, it will be no problem if you want to start transferring and then trying to make money. That's that that's what we how I want to train and condition people to think. Because a lot of you guys are going to start out as hobbyists, and then you, you're going to want to go into the, um, the professional world. You really don't want to take the habits and the mindset of a hobbyist into that world. So um, Because you're going to be missing out on a lot of time and money spending on trying to fix the operation and, and, and trying to f calculate how much gravity feed you need to, to, to supply this many NFT systems. Like all these type of Einstein E equals MC square calculations is going to be taking up too much time and you're going to need that time to conduct business. That's what you're going to be needing to do. So if we train right the right way, then we'll play the right way when it's time to play. But if you can develop bad habits, then those are going to continue to go with you in the long run. And then it'll be making that much harder to transition uh, to the highest level of doing aquaponics for profit. So hopefully this helps you out. Um, and everyone else is helped out by, um, you know, this blueprint review and if anyone else has any questions, just continue asking. And, uh, we are definitely here for you. <laughs>